the apex predator of the post-apocalyptic wasteland. There are few who encounter these ferocious creatures and live to tell the tale. Standing at approximately 15 feet tall, with an immunity to radiation and razor-sharp claws, these beasts are above all, in terms of threat, savageness, and in some cases, intelligence. The origins of the Deathclaw is a little vague, but they were created before the Great War by the United States military. The sole purpose of their creation was to replace human soldiers in close combat situations. They were created through a combination of animal DNA, most of which is unknown, but the basis of their DNA comes from the Jackson Chameleon, a far less threatening creature, but you can see the similarities. The scaly skin, spiked back, and the presence of horns. Genetically engineered to survive on their own in the harshest of places, it is clear the project was a success, but whether or not they were ever deployed on the battlefield, pre-war that is, has yet to be discovered. It is unknown how these creatures were able to escape, but one explanation is that the facility they were confined to was damaged during the Great War, allowing them to escape to the outside. Over the next few decades, Deathclaws have bred and spread across the states, quickly rising to the top of the food chain in most pre-war ecosystems. At some point during the Master's reign, Deathclaws were captured and refined to make them even stronger through genetic manipulation. What use the Master had for them was most likely a similar one to the US Army. We can only speculate as to what the reason was, as there is no evidence other than the official Strategies and Secrets Guide for Fallout 2, which says that it happened, but other than that, doesn't go into detail. Due to how the Death Claws came to be, their numbers were limited, and they restricted themselves to a series of isolated nests, which led to rumours of their existence. In 2161, the majority of Southern California had never seen these creatures before. A tale of some new monster, born from the ashes of the old world, arose. A legendary creature few knew of, and even fewer had seen. The exception to this was the Boneyard, a struggling community well aware of the creature's existence due to the location of the mother's den. A lone deathclaw had decided to nest in the cellar of an abandoned warehouse, which caused several issues concerning the town's welfare. Another town during this time is the Hub, who also experienced a similar encounter with a deathclaw, but this time it was only a single man. Slappy is the sole person to have seen the creature and even knows where to find it. These rumours gradually spread throughout the wasteland, along with the Deathclaws themselves, who, in doing so, turned their own myth into a reality. Carnivorous, bipedal, designed for maximum lethality. The choice to make them stand on their hind legs was an obvious one, as this allowed them to see a greater distance and also giving them a better chance at detecting both food and resources. This decision also freed the upper limbs, allowing them to be sculpted into deadly weapons. Opposable thumbs and the addition of two fingers gave this creature a powerful grasp. Each digit holds an incredibly large talon, sharp enough to rip a human to pieces in a single swipe. Their thick, scaly skin is impenetrable to almost all attacks from blunt and edged weapons. Firearms and energy weapons, on the other hand, can penetrate their thick hide, making it one of the more reliable ways to kill a Deathclaw. Finally, their remarkable design is complemented with defensive horns and dorsal spikes, although these appear to be more cosmetic than anything else. Deathclaws despite being seen wandering the wastes alone, are pack animals. Leadership is established within the group by the Alpha Pair, the strongest male and female of the group. 
The other members accept the status of the alpha pair and instinctively follow and migrate with them. They are fiercely territorial and will usually opt for locations away from inhabited areas, but they have been known to settle into temporary nests near civilization such as the mother at the boneyard and the pack at quarry junction. Once the group has claimed its territory, they become incredibly difficult to dislodge. Alpha pairs simply won't abandon their claimed land, even if the other one has died. The remaining alpha will simply choose another mate, typically the next strongest member of the group. This means the only way to reclaim territory from a pack of death claws is to kill the alpha pair or wipe out the group entirely, although both of these methods are no easy feat. Death Claws communicate in a very animal-like manner. They use a combination of growls and body language, although there are some possessing the ability to mimic a human voice, provided their intelligence is artificially increased. More on that later. Believe it or not, these creatures are made even more dangerous by their ability to reproduce. Unlike the provider of their DNA, who carry their young inside their body, death claws instead lay their eggs in a more reptilian fashion. The eggs are always fathered by the strongest male in the pack to ensure the offspring have a better chance of survival. These eggs are incredibly durable, but the mother will still seek out a safe, dark place for the nest, such as a cave or cellar. One unusual aspect of a mother death claw is once impregnated, she will prepare a separate nest for her young, covering the eggs with sticks, dirt, and whatever else is on hand, before guarding it with her life. It's almost as if the other death claws can't be trusted. Baby death claws are born with a light brown skin tone and live under the protection of their parents. As they mature, the skin continues to darken until reaching a murky brown, black, or even blue. Although this is very rarely seen and only happens to the older, more experienced death claws. This bluish hue could be a side effect of having the chameleon DNA, but it's never strictly said. These baby death claws are similar in appearance to adults, but lack the secondary characteristics such as the horns and dorsal spikes, as these gradually appear as the death claw ages. And, like most other species of animal, the males and females have varying features that distinguishes them from one another. The males have a far larger set of horns that grow forwards, while the females have slightly smaller horns that grow backwards. And the dorsal spikes of males are far larger in comparison to that of a female's. Claws are present from day one in both sexes, meaning that despite being the weakest of their kind, they still pose a threat to your average human. Speaking of humans, death claws do not actively seek them out, but due to human expansion and the death claws increasing population, it was inevitable that the two should meet. Death claws are incredibly dangerous to humans, no matter how well prepared for battle they are. Even the Brotherhood of Steel, who wear full suits of power armor and use advanced weaponry, suffer severe casualties when crossing the path of a death claw. It was this ferociousness that led to the Enclave trying to exploit them as a replacement for human soldiers. Sound familiar? The Enclave experiments in 2235 focused on increasing their intelligence and did succeed, leading to the very first pack of intelligent death claws. What the scientists didn't anticipate is increasing their intelligence beyond what they wanted. They wanted a creature capable of understanding and following orders and nothing more. Instead, they had given them the ability to think freely and even speak with varying degrees of articulation. These intelligent death claws were used to capture the inhabitants of Vault 13, and after doing so, they abandoned the Enclave and transformed the now available vault into their new home. 
The incredible thing about these intelligent Deathclaws is they manage to live alongside humans, actually integrating and protecting several of them from the surrounding area. Although this did have implications as certain humans didn't trust them, and others even attempted to kill the Mother Deathclaw and her hatchling, only partially succeeding, with the Mother surviving. One thing that should be clear is that when you cross the Enclave, expect retaliation. For their desertion, an elite team of Enclave soldiers led by Frank Horrigan was sent to Vault 13 to exterminate the entire settlement, and they almost succeeded. A single Deathclaw by the name of Goris was out at the time of the attack and survived. He is the second to last remaining intelligent Deathclaw left alive at the end of Fallout 2, with the other being Zahn at Navarro. The Fallout Bible is mixed as to whether Zahn and Goris could reproduce and keep the intelligent species alive. John Daly, the creator and designer for most of the intelligent Deathclaw content, said that while both Zahn and Goris are male, the intelligence gene is male-specific and dominant, meaning they could continue their species with the aid of a female Deathclaw. However, Chris Avalone said that any talking animal alive at the end of Fallout 2 all died. These two possible fates of the intelligence Deathclaws are not considered canon anymore, making it further unclear as to whether any intelligent Deathclaws are still alive. This tragic tale of human intervention was followed by another, and once again, the Enclave are involved. They still wanted an intelligent Deathclaw force, but this time the method was a little more crude, as well as more successful. Domestication units, devices surgically implanted into the Deathclaw's brain, turning the creature into an obedient killing machine with very little chance of desertion. Even when their own life is destined to be lost, they remain loyal. However, the Brotherhood of Steel did fabricate a scrambling device that allows the Deathclaw to freely think, and we all know the first person they want a word with. These Deathclaws have lost their eyesight, but like humans, when one sense is lost, the others are increased. While they may be more vulnerable compared to those that can still see, they do have excellent hearing and will more often than not hear the most silence of enemies, making it almost impossible to sneak past. Exposure to FEV has left these Deathclaws a few shades paler than most others. Depigmentation has left their hide a stark white and their eyes a deep red. The eyes are in fact not red, what we are seeing is the red blood cells of the retina now that pigment production has stopped, leaving the iris colourless and transparent. Glowing death claws are highly irradiated, their bloodstream no longer filtering the radioactive particles leading to accumulation and the glowing effect coursing through their bodies. Originally, death claws were mammals, not reptiles as they are today. They would have been covered with fur instead of scales, and DNA pulled from both wolverines and brown bears. The only thing remaining the same was their creation via FEV. The reason for the change was due to a technical limitation of the rendering software, which couldn't get their fur to move properly. How do you feel about hairy death claws? Are you glad they turned into the lizard-like lurkers we have today, or would you have preferred fighting a 15 feet furry foe? Deathclaws are unnatural creatures that can, given the right approach, live alongside humans. They mostly keep to themselves, only ever defending their land and hunting for food. It is humans who created them, refined them, modified them, domesticated them, and when they disobeyed, massacred them. They have a very short but painful history thanks to human intervention. They are hunted for sport, their eggs consumed, claws taken and transformed into gauntlets, but there are humans out there willing to give them a chance. 
The Chosen One can help the intelligent Deathclaw at Vault 13, even fighting alongside both Goris and Zahn. The sole survivor can return a stolen egg back to the brooding mother, who understands that they aren't there to cause trouble, and are instead reuniting her with her unborn child. I'm not saying go hug the nearest Deathclaw you can find, because you'll likely end up in pieces. What I'm saying is, they're not quite the mindless killing machines they've been made out to be. They're just another living creature acting on instinct, forming a group, procreating, and making the best life they can in a predominantly human world. Be sure to show your support by liking the video, and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.